So let us now look at an implementation of a gate. So on the top here we have the power supply and on the bottom we have ground. What we have more is two p-type transistors that are in parallel and then we have two n-type transistors here that are in series. We have also two inputs, so the first input A is inputted to both the gate of a P and an N transistor and also the input B is input to both a P and an N transistor. And then here we have the output of our gate. So let us try to understand what happens here by looking at our truth table for this gate. So we have our two inputs A and B and the truth table enumerates all the possible combinations of these two inputs. Let us start with both of them being zero. So if the gate is zero, it is low, then a P transistor is conducting. So we have conducting here and we have conducting here. And our N transistor where the gate is low, then we will have the, what we call, what we model as an open switch. So this will not be conducting here and it will not be conducting here. So referring to our switch model, it means that we have a short circuit here from the power supply to the output, which means that this will output a one. Now let us go to the next row in our truth table where A is a zero and B is a one. So if A is a zero, it means that we are conducting here in the P transistor, but in the other P transistor with the input B, here we will have an open switch. And for the n-type transistors, for the one that has the input A to the gate, this will not be conducting because if we have a zero, the n-type transistor is not conducting and the B-type tra transistor will be conducting in this model. So again, we can see here that in our model, we will have a short circuit between the voltage supply and the output and there will not be a connection to ground in this case. So the output here will be a one. So we move to the next row here where A equals one and B equals zero. If A equals one, it means that this one here will not be conducting while the one with the B input will be conducting. And similar for the N type transistor, since A is a one, this one will be conducting and this one will not. So again, we can see that we have a short circuit here between the voltage supply and the output and there is no connection to the ground at all. So again, we will have an output one. So we move to the last row of our truth table where both A and B will be equal to one. And in that case, for the P-type transistors, none of them will be conducting, while both of the N-type transistors will be conducting. So what we can see here when we model this as our switch, then we have a short circuit here between the ground and the output. So our output here will be zero. And we can also see that there is no connection here between the voltage supply and our output. And if we look at our truth table, what we have implemented here with our four transistors is a NAND gate. So we can say that a two input NAND gate will require four transistors, two transistors of P type and two transistors of N type. Now let us look at another example of a gate. So again, we have our voltage supply and ground. We have two P type transistors, this time connected in series and we have also two n-type transistors, this time connected in parallel. We have again two inputs, A and B, where A is connected both to the gate of a p-transistor and to the gate of an n-transistor. And similarly, the input B is connected both to the gate of a p-transistor and also to the gate of one of our n-transistors. And then we have our output from our gate here. Now we again look at our truth table in order to see which gate we are implementing here. 
So if both A and B are zero, it means that both our P transistors will be conducting and none of our N transistors will be conducting. So here we will have a one as an output because we have a short circuit between the voltage supply and the output. So if we go to the second row of our truth table, we have A equals zero and B equals one. So if A equals zero, then this transistor here will be conducting, while this one will not. And for the n-type transistor, the one with the A input will now not be conducting, while for the B input transistor, this will be conducting. So here we can see that there is a short circuit between the ground and the output, and there is no connection at all between the voltage supply and the output. So what we have here in our truth table is that this will give us a zero on the output. And for our input combination, when A is a one and B is a zero, it means that this P transistor here will not be conducting since we have a one, but the one with the B input will be conducting. And for the n-type transistors we have the opposite. So the one with the A input will be conducting and the one with the B input will not be conducting. So we will have a short circuit when we model this as a switch from the ground to the output, which gives us a zero here in the truth table. And again, we can see that we have no connection here between the voltage supply and the output. And for the input combination, when both A and B are ones, none of the P-type transistors will be conducting, but both the N-type transistors will be conducting. So again, we will see that we have a short circuit from the ground to the output, which gives us a zero here in our truth table. And we also have no connection between the voltage and the output. And if we now look at our truth table here, we see that what we have implemented is a NOR gate. So the NOR gate can be given by four transistors where we have two P-type transistors and two N-type transistors. And using these two examples as background, let us just give a few basic design rules, but we give them in an informal way. So one design rule is that for each input combination that we have, there must be a path between the output and either the voltage supply, because this will give us a one, or the ground, and this will give us a zero. And for each input combination, there must also not be a short circuit between the voltage supply and the ground, because then we are leaking a lot of current, and that is something we do not want to do. And finally, if our n-type are in series, then our p-type transistors must be in parallel, and vice versa. If our p-type transistors are in series, then the n-type transistors must be in parallel. And if we follow these design rules, we can realize basically any Boolean function using n-type and p-type transistors, which will give us our CMOS realization.